Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today this is an updated tutorial talking about a rope animation I've done in the past. So we are going to use a new implementation of helical connection nodes compared to the older one. And the workflow is expected to be much faster. So let's start. So here we in Blender, as being said, I'm going to use the presets which you can download for free from the link in the description. Let's create an object and let's start with a curved linear, which is basically just a resampled curved line node. Okay, and then we're going to add our new presets, which is called helical connections. So immediately we see something is happening. So basically three other splines is instanced on our original splines. So let's increase the initial values. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to increase some tilt using a float range node. So the float range node essentially is an accumulated field node so that we're adding one value or one radiance on the tilt along our curves. That's why you see this kind of a spiral structure. Here I want to remind you that uh, as we are adding one value for every point on the curve, which means if you're increasing the resolution of your curve, you're increasing the overall rotation as well. So in many other cases, what you can do is to use the stop mode by changing that beyond zero. Then no matter how you actually increase the count, the overall rotation is always being set by the start and the stop value without regard with our step. So this is the kind of idea. Okay, but uh, today we're just going to use the step mode. We are going to change the setting later. Right now, next, I'm going to add a directional fourth and for better visualization I'm going to add that into the radius and you can see there is a clear cut in the middle so the left side is having a radius of one due to our directional fourth on the right side there is a value of zero okay and by increasing this scale offset you can in, you can start to create a transition area which is between zero and one and here, by manipulating this directional offset, you can animate it. Here, for our animation, we are going to do the offset relationship. So I'm just going to hit this box. So the directional fold has been reversed. Okay. After we have done this, there are several things I would like to manipulate. Is that our directional fold is outputting value from 0 to 1. I'm going to remap using basically a map range node. So this is similar to a map range node. The only difference is that instead of five sockets in total, I only have three sockets because I know I'm mapping zero to one. Okay, and I'm going to increase the radius a little bit. So not from zero to one, but 0 0.1 to one or something else. It does not really matter. You just get a kind of idea just to be fine. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a set position node to offset some of the points. So let's deal with a combine X, Y, Z. And then I'm still going to remap zero to one by sh control shift D, duplicate, and uh, working on the X axis. So yes, and then move that to the right. I'm also going to cancel this centered. Okay, so once we have done this, what we can do is to use the directional offset to animate that, and you can see how it actually goes. Uh, initially it looks like this and then it starts to form a rope. Okay. You can definitely increase the scale so that uh, the animation looks much smoother. If you do not really like all these kind of parametric controls, you would like to control within the viewports, then what you can do is to use an empty object so this is an empty object, let's make it that, that into an arrow and let's select our empty object. We can cancel all this kind of directional offset and the scale offset and we can use the empty to actually control the entire settings. Okay. Here I realize it's a very difficult to visualize, so let's add a bevel curve in order to add some volume and we can decrease the radius to make it less thick. And I think this is it. So let's tweak some parameters. Let's add its length, uh, increasing the stop, uh, and so on. I think this is fine. Okay. So next thing we I'd like to do 
is to deal with the rotation because now if I try to rotate the angle of my camera and you realize everything is already being rotated before they start to form a rope and I think this is very unrealistic and I hate this very much so the thing we're going to do is to actually manipulate with this step so instead of using the stop I'm just going to cancel that and I'm just going to control shift D to duplicate this remap 0 to 1 and plug that into the step so I think uh, when it's inside the fold on the right side then there is no rotation but when the fold starts to approach then it should start to rotate okay and i think this is already good enough as you can see the relationship so here it's just the kind of dealing with the parameters so that we do not see this expansion so just increasing it and move that to the left further uh, you can tweak all this kind of value by on your free times. There is uh, no strict answer about uh, what should you actually do. You can also increase the fall for maybe making it look better. Yes, I think this is good enough. Okay, I think this is good. So the next thing I'm going to do is to make this rope structure much more complex. If you have watched the previous older tutorial, then you will realize I was trying to make a loop to isolate every spline within this triplet and try to make a triplet on the top of each spline. But uh, with our new helical connection nodes, we do not need uh, to use a loop at all. We just uh, duplicate this group node and use that. Immediately we have this kind of triplet. Due to parameters, it may not be very clear with its relationship, but I don't think you need to. You just to try to scale down the parameters and try to tweak it, then I think it should be looking great. Looking like a kind of a braid structure or something like that, but I, anyway. Uh, and the next thing what I'm going to do is to add a, a rotation for this triplet on the top of triplet as well. So just the increasing a step and uh, then it looks more like kind of rope and you can definitely animate that. Okay. So basically what's really new within this tutorial is that we have the accumulator field node, which is responsible for this float range step mode. And we also have this new helical connection presets. I've discussed the how to build these presets. Basically, the foundation is in the curve to mesh, in which we're dealing with the profile curve to create all these kind of triplets. Okay, so basically that's it. However, you may realize that we're working with a straight line and it's pretty boring at the end of the day. And I do not really recommend you to work with curved line in this particular case because it will be the best for directional fall to work with a straight line. Okay. So what if we would like to make uh, this animation more interesting? Then we're going to use a curve modifier. Okay. If we're trying to use the curve modifier, we obviously need a curve. So let's just uh, make a Bezier curve and I'm going to delete all these round points. Instead, I'm going to draw a curve by my own. Uh, this is kind of very ugly, but uh, as, long as, you get, as long as you get a kind of idea, then it should be fine. And you select this curve. And uh, immediately you have this kind of effect. You can either move your curve object for the effect, or you can move your directional fall for, for the effect. Okay. Uh, here, I just want to remind you, ideally speaking, you should be able to use the curve object from geometry nodes as well. But I think uh, the the curve modifier due to the coding it does not recognize the modification from geometry nodes so you can try by your own but it may not work in such a kind of case i'd recommend you just draw a curve by your own or using whatever other methods okay next i would like to discuss something about the resolution because i realized there is some jagginess of these kind of lines there are several problems that uh, you might encounter. One is the resolution of your Bezier curve. You can realize if the, your, the resolution is very low, then it's 
the entire basic curve becomes very jaggy. So the curve modifier results also becomes very jaggy, so you increase that. Uh, but also remember that this is the preview and the other is the render, so you may want to increase that as well. Uh, another thing that you can do to, in to improve the resolution is there is a preset which is called a smooth curve. A uh, smooth curve uh, node is basically dealing with the handle of our basic curve. So it can also potentially improve the resolution when it happens. Uh, so you can try in your free times in case you find the resolution is very bad. And here I'm also going to fix a bug I realized. Okay. I've discussed the similar kind of bug in my proximity 4 for tutorial. And it's basically the same principle. So basically when I'm making this directional fall, it's basically comparing your object with the position attribute. Okay. It's actually very simple. And uh, we're changing the position value here. So when we do the directional fall at a later step, although it looks like uh, this linkage and these two linkage are coming from the same node, but they are actually outputting completely two sets of value. So the real way to do that is to actually capture attributes, which is a vector, because the position is a vector, and then plug this attribute into the custom vector. Then immediately you can see there is a huge change of the evaluation. So this is more actually correct way to do it. Although it looks kind of very painful, we have to change all these kind of parameters. But this is uh, really the standard way that you should deal with. And uh, yeah, basically that's it. You can try to change parameters by your own, but uh, that's the idea. Okay. But the whole principle has not been changed. You still need to deal with all this kind of animation, forth, and so on and so forth. As last step, uh, I'm going to add some noise uh, during this animation. So what I'm going to do is just to add a vector mass in between. And I'm going to use a noise 3D, which is equivalent to noise texture node. So I'm going to output these colors into the vector. Then you can see there is a noise being added. You can increase the scale. You can see there's jagginess. You can decrease the frequency, which is the scale of our noise texture. So make it kind of smoother. Uh, however, this noise is not really animating itself. So what you can potentially do is you can enable this uh, 4D evolution and link the object's locations, changes to its evolution. So it's one way of thinking. You can also vector mass to scale up these changes. So you can see the rope is being wiggled when it's forming the rope. Uh, so these are just the kind of concepts. You can deal with all these kind of parameters and the settings and so on and so forth. But uh, that's basically the idea. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.